for us as long as fair justice comes after 43 years of torment and so many lives being ruined. A whole country history really. 42 years have gone by and we've missed out on so much. So people's morale is still really high and uh, we're just waiting for it to all be over. Libyans look to the future after 42 years under Muammar Gaddafi's iron-fisted rule. The rebel advance into Tripoli has brought Gaddafi's regime to the brink of collapse now. Tunisia, Egypt, and now Libya. The revolution spreading across North Africa and the Arab world is reshaping the region. Mona el Tahawi, she's an Egyptian journalist, she's a columnist, an international public speaker on Arab and Muslim issues. And she joins us from New York. And uh, Mona, it's good to see you. You obviously, you've got your finger on the pulse here. You've got a massive following in the Arab world through social media. What are folks saying about what's taking place now in Libya? Well, first of all, they're ecstatic at the crumbling of the Gaddafi regime because this is the longest ruling dictator in the world and to imagine Gaddafi gone is just an amazing thing and then secondly and I think this really speaks to just how everybody in the region feels this is something that is being passed on like a baton Libyans in uh, Shohada Square or the, the Martyr Square which is what used to be called Green Square are now chanting to the Syrians to tell them never fear Syria after Gaddafi Bashar will fall so they're already looking to the Syrians and saying be inspired by us and the Bahrainis are saying we should be inspired by Libya. The Palestinians in Gaza are saying we should be inspired. You know, so it, it, it's a feeling that the entire region is, it has benefited from this and that this is a great boost to all the revolutionaries in the region. Do you know, Mona, using Facebook and Twitter and all these other things, if, if rebels or protesters are using social media in Libya to galvanize this movement? Well, you know, the internet was cut for the past four months now, so it was just... Uh, Libyans just got back online yesterday so many of the voices that we had been following at the beginning when the revolution started in February had gone completely silent so clearly social media is not such a big tool in, in for the Libyan revolution but you are seeing some voices come back now and I'm following some Libyans who are telling us what it's like to be in their homes as they hear gunfire outside and you are seeing more communication between people so you're seeing for example Yemenis writing to Libyans and saying well, you know thank you for what you're doing because you're making our president dictator Ali Abdullah Saleh tremble so you, you are seeing the voices come back now uh, that's really incredible the way everybody is talking to each other and communicating uh, you know the protests the Arab Spring it began uh, the home country your home country of Egypt inspired protests in Libya shortly afterwards uh, do, do folks like yourself do you think that Egypt is headed in the right direction that life is better without Mubarak well, you know, it began in Tunisia. It began in Tunisia in December when that young man, Mohamed Bouazizi, set himself on fire and really literally set the, uh, our imagination on fire in the Middle East and North Africa, liberated our imagination, if you like. And I think when you look at Tunisia and when you look at Egypt and now as we begin to look at Libya, um, every country has a struggle ahead. I, w I was in Egypt last month. It's clear that we have a long way to go. We replaced one Mubarak with the Supreme Council of Mubaraks. That's the military junta that runs Egypt right now. Um, they're putting civilians on military trial um, they refuse so far they haven't set a date for the elections so clearly we have a long way to go in Egypt but uh, during that week I spent in Egypt I picked up an am amazing amount of optimism everybody has an opinion everybody has a view of where Egypt should go and that to me is what is the most important reward of these revolutions our imaginations have been liberated we can dream again of the kinds of countries that we want to live in and, and Mona you covered Libya as a journalist How, does it surprise you I mean do you ever think that you would see this day the possibility that Gaddafi's regime 42 years would end it, it's unbelievable, Suzanne. I was in Libya along with other journalists in 1996 to celebrate the so-called revolution of basically the coup that swept Gaddafi to power in 1969. One of his male bodyguards twisted my nipple in the middle of a news conference. So I have no fond memories of that trip in Libya. Other than that, I just remember the tremendous amount of isolation that Libyans were living under. It, is, it speaks to the power and the courage of Libyans that despite that isolation and despite the sheer brutality of the the Gaddafi regime and despite the fact that the world would look at him as a clown they continued a revolution they began many years ago this didn't happen it didn't start in February and so we must acknowledge the courage of Libyans who for decades have been trying to end this brutal dictatorship all right Mona thank you very much we appreciate your uh, your reporting there I